Hello, everyone. Welcome to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake. And I'm Russ. And today, we are talking about sink cutouts and yeah. home renovation, but oh. particularly sink cutouts. Yeah, we've got one project today. We're going to mount this undermount sink in this nice slab of Corian solid surface countertop material, which I don't think we've ever cut on a session before. No. Maybe way back when we did one of the earlier material sessions. Yeah, we've definitely um, cut it a lot here at HQ. It's kind of a pleasure to cut, so why We not? thought we'd share. Yeah. Uh, we're going to walk you through that process, how to lay it all out, how to work with this material. We're going to do our classic mid-show uh, shop tour. We've got mm -hmm. a fun shop tour to show you. And then, of course, at the end of this show, just like every other show, we're doing a live Q&A and a giveaway. So make sure halfway through the show, when we pull up that poll question, you answer it. And just so people can ruminate on it, uh, the poll question today is going to be... What other home renovation projects do you want to see us do? Um, we've been bouncing this one around HQ for a little while. Mm -hmm. We thought this was a good place to start yeah. because these undermount sinks require a really clean cutout in the top of your countertop. Um, but we know that there are a lot of other home reno projects that you can use Origin for. We call it our favorite most adaptable hole saw because <laughs> if you need to cut a five and a half inch circle in something, it's the perfect tool for that. But also, you know, ask us about stairs or oh, yeah. Stair electrical treads. outlets or decks and porches mm -hmm. or gates or you know door mounting the list goes on ask us about it we want to know what you want to hear about yeah and if you're joining us for the first time today welcome um it's a fantastic time to be here because we have a promo going on yeah absolutely the so back to the shop promo this is our back to the shop promo if you buy origin between now and the 27th september 27th you save over $525, yeah. I think, altogether. It's kind of insane. We're just throwing it all at you. Uh, you're going to get two router bits. Two router bits, a quarter inch um, ball nose bit, and a eighth inch O flute bit. That's for brass, plas thin plastics, and things like that. In addition to the three router bits that already come with Origin, and these all are solid carbide, top of the line router bits. They're oh, really yeah. great. Oh, yeah. You're going to get a mini sys. Uh, about yay big with a customizable foam insert to mm -hmm. do with what you will. Uh, you're going to get a two-part training with Russ and I. So Both that's of us. intro and advanced two-day uh, online training course. You're going to get a roll of double-sided tape, mm -hmm. an absolute must-have. You're going to get four premium projects, kind of starting you from start to advance. All four of those, by the end of it, you're going to be a star. If you're not already a star by the end of our training. And... If you buy the complete system, that's Origin plus plate plus workstation, you're going to get an additional bundle discount. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so. Um, so because we know we're going to have a lot of people joining specifically for this promo today, we're going to keep the Origin stuff a little more on the intro side. But to keep it interesting for everybody who's watched every session with us, we wanted to bring in this Corian, which is kind of a new material. So as we're waiting for people to filter in, um, Maybe we just go ahead and start cutting this stuff because we've got a lot of cutting to do today. We're going to cut the sink cutout. We're going to cut holes for the faucets. And then we're also going to cut holes for threaded inserts to hold the sink on. So maybe we go ahead and cut that sink cutout and then we talk about what Corian is and how we work with it. Let her rip. Okay. Um, if we pull over to the Origin Cam here, I can just show you all what I've got going on. Uh, I've already scanned and gridded this workspace. You can see we're working rotated 90 degrees here. Uh, that's because I want to make sure that I have the whole length of this countertop to place tape. Um, the countertop is, I think, 24 inches deep, about two feet, which you could, uh, in theory, reach all with origin. The trick that we do when we run into the space constraint is flip origin around so that when you get to those tight corners, you're actually using the back end of it for both countertops and flooring, things like flooring registers. But when the countertop's not attached to a cabinet or not attached to the wall, just flip it whatever orientation you need so that you have the clearance to route with. Yeah. Let's go back to the screen here. I've got it all taped out. I've got it all gridded. Uh, and I gridded the two points, uh, my x-axis, on this side here so that I know that everything is nice and square to that edge because I don't want to trust necessarily that the factory made that corner cut exactly 90 degrees. So I've gridded off. That is my first reference. And then this bottom line actually is my second reference. 
And then I placed this sync uh, template, which I designed in Studio, but which you could design exactly all on tool with Origin because it's just rounded rectangles and circles. I've placed that all already where I want it to go and where it should go based on the documentation that came with the sync. Always read the manual. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and what we're looking at here is three hole cutouts for the faucet. We're going to do those later. We're going to start over here with these two rectangles. And this is an origin tip. This is something that you probably wouldn't do any other way. We're going to start with this outer line here. And we're just going to engrave that. That's going to be the outer boundary of the sink. And we're just going to use that to help align the sink while everything's flipped upside down. There are more complicated ways you would do that if you're doing this with a traditional router. But I think it's, it's super easy and convenient when you're using CNC. And then this inner line is going to be the actual cutout itself. And I'm going to do that with auto pass in just two passes. We're, we're going to start with the engraving because I've got the engraving bit chucked up here. Sweet. So let's let it rip on that engraving. Um, and then we'll do a quick spindle swap and get into that inside cut for the sink cutout. Let it rip. OK. Step away. Yeah, you can see just double checking all my cut settings here. I've got my depth. 0 0.02 inches, great for an engraving. I'm set for an online cut, which is what I want for engraving. No offsets for online cuts. Engraving bit diameter. I already Z-touched, and this is such a light speed, or such a light cut that I'm just going to feed it by hand. I don't need to check my speeds here. Here we go. All right. For those of you that have been here since the beginning, or our experienced Origin user, users, bear with me. I'm going to just explain what the setup is on this Corian, what these dominoes are for the people that may be seeing it for the first time. Origin has a camera in front of it, and it is looking out ahead of itself for those dominoes that come in a roll of tape, and that's what tells Origin where it is in space. It, it, nothing else other than just location information, but that allows us to place digital files with incredible accuracy, we cut them right on the money. And Russ is using one of the stock router bits that comes with the tool. It's a 60 degree engraving bit. I'm just doing a really shallow 0 0.02 engraving just to make a mark. And if we're watching the screen, you know that as long as he is within that circle, that is his corrective range. You've got a half inch of correction range. If you happen to fall outside of that half of an inch correction, the tool will retract a bit, keep you from messing up. And therein lies the magic. Cool. I love how this stuff cuts. You can check that out on the overhead cam as I swap bits here. And you might have noticed I had to pause. That was just to get the handle around this clamp here. But you can always stop when in doubt. Just pause, retract, and you can pick back right where you left off. Nice. That is beautiful. And so I'm swapping now for that 5 millimeter O-flute bit. I know Jake and I really sing the praises of this five millimeter O-flute bit, but you're going to see it in action. Um, O-flute, great for cutting plastics. This five millimeter O-flute bit, especially since it's on a quarter, or not a quarter, an eight millimeter shank, is incredibly good at uh, taking really deep cuts through sheets. So I'm going to actually do this all in one depth roughing pass, and then just one finishing pass. So two passes, but all at full depth. OK, when you change your bit diameter, you can see that that gray area that shows the cut area actually increases to represent what we're actually going to cut. I Z-touched, so Origin knows where the end of the router bit is. And when I cut big pieces like this loose, uh, I like to, here, let's change that. Depth. Let's just do 0.53 so we're sure we cut all the way through. When I cut big pieces like this loose, A, I taped it underneath so that I know it is, or not know, but hope that it stays in place. 
I don't know for sure that it's going to stay in place. The other thing that I do is I like to start and finish at the top of the cut, uh, because if this thing breaks loose, then at least I'm done. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, a little rust tip. Okay, so I'm going to turn auto pass on here. It's got 28 passes because uh, that's left over from the engraving bit. So let's just change this all to 0 0.53. I think I made that. So 0 0.53 all in one pass. And I'm going to bump up this roughing pass to 0 0.04 inches, which is just about a millimeter. And you can see that that gray area there increased in width a little bit. So it's going to take a roughing pass to full depth all the way around. And then I'm going to take one more pass at full depth all the way around just to clean off that last millimeter. Perfect. Okay. Here we go. How about it? That larger roughing offset is a really good call, especially when you when you are you know really going after it on sheet goods and stuff. Just give yourself a little extra room in case you fall out of your corrective range. If you fall out of your corrective range at full depth, it's going to take just a little bit longer for that bit to retract. So you want to give yourself a little extra space so that your finish pass cleans that up. And I know I, I do full, pat, full depth passes on MDF and plywood all day long with this bit, but when Russ told me that he was doing it in Corian, I was impressed. And for those who aren't familiar with AutoPass, either. A pause, Jake. Yes. And explain what just happened there. Oh, I didn't see I what happened. I was being a little ambitious. Ah, see how you are? Yeah. So, I practiced this before the show, but you never know what's going to happen when you do it live. Um, Origin did tell me, hey, you're pushing a little bit too hard. So it retracted. Nice. Which is okay. Yeah. It happens sometimes. It's a dense material. It's a dense material. So, over here in AutoPass, I'm just going to bump that up to three passes instead of two, so I'm gonna do that depth in two passes, and then take that last full depth pass to finish it up. Perfect. Just so you know what's going on. Yeah, okay. okay. And since we changed that depth, I think I do need to start again at the top. All right, for those that aren't familiar, with auto pass. That is a paid extension that you can add to your origin. It speeds up the cutting process just a little bit. So normally with origin, you would manually type in the depth per pass. With auto pass, you enter in your final depth that you want to end up at and final offset. And it ramps down from one depth to the next. And then finally ramps into your finish cut with all without retracting so if you are in a small scale production mindset or just want to make the most out of your time auto pass is honestly a game changer it's hard to imagine ever going back it's a one-time purchase purchase one time per tool Steady, steady cutting, steady sound. Corian's great because it's so consistent. So you're not going to hit any sort of void or anything. So it just feels very consistent to cut. I'm hearing that uh, there's some questions on cutting through markers. Shaper tape is considered a one-time use kind of thing, and you are absolutely supposed to cut right on through it. If you cut through a domino, it just kills that one domino, but the rest of the strip of tape is fully functional. For something like this, he's not going to run out of dominoes. 
But if he was doing, let's say, a really dense engraving where he was really cutting through dominoes left and right, you would actually be able to see in the top right corner there's a little domino image on the screen. That would go from black to gray to red. And that's telling you, hey, I can't see enough dominoes, so you need to add more tape and then add the scan. So you can build off of that original scan without losing any of your cut information. And we'll warn you ahead of time if you're starting to get close. But generally, that is okay. And with most things you see us doing here, we tend to try to speed things up a little bit, you know, go a little deeper than, than we might recommend. But one, we do this every day. And two, we're trying to make it all fit in one nice hour long show. So with anything, we can't encourage you enough to test, see what you're comfortable with, and when in doubt, go with, a, go with our recommendations, which is, Whatever the diameter of the cutter should be your cut depth per pass. So quarter inch cutter, quarter inch depth pass. So Corian, we're all kind of new to Corian and we've had it around, we've cut with it used it in projects. I didn't quite know what it was made out of. And we just learned that Corian is mostly acrylic mixed with an alumina powder. What that means, I do not know. But I can tell you what, it makes a fantastic surface that is seemingly impervious to everything. But it polishes up beautifully. Cuts beautifully, cuts very similar to plastic, I would say, because it's mostly plastic, but uh, just denser. But it takes the most tooling quite well, including a roundover bit on a, on a trim router, which we'll, we'll finish up with. looks like the end, close to the end of his second depth pass. If you watch closely, he's going to ramp into his finish pass. So the, for mo most of the time, I recommend a, for a roughing offset, 0 0.02 or 0 0.03. But if you're just starting out with Origin and you feel like you want a little bit more room for mistakes, uh, bumping it up to 0 0.03, 0 0.04 for your rough pass is totally acceptable. Just means you're taking a little bit more off on your finished pass, but the difference is almost unnoticeable when you're actually cutting. But the idea behind it is one, giving yourself a rough offset gives you room to make mistakes and just hog out the material. And two, the finish pass, given that you're cutting so little material, in, in a normal instance, 0 0.02 inches, you're putting such little load on the tool that it's able to be even more responsive than, if it, than it would be if it was under a heavy cut load. We through? We're done. There we go. Thumbs up. Nice and steady. And so you can see how nice of chips this stuff makes. If you bump that over to the origin cam, you can see those are nice and flaky, not dusty, which is what you want. That means it's really cutting actual shavings of material, not just grinding, you know? Nice. So a couple things happened there. I'll do a little like debrief, right? Yeah. So I was trying to cut a little bit deeper 
than I would normally, just for the purposes of the show, because mm-hmm. I didn't want everybody to have to sit here, although we like to think that it's zen and relaxing <laughs> to just watch a nice origin cut. Um, and occasionally when you push the tool too hard, uh, we'll say, hey, that's a bit too much. Um, and at that point, you just back it off and go a little bit slower. One thing that I did realize when I was partway through is that I'm all the way down at spindle speed three. Uh, and green and speed. Earlier, earlier today, I was actually working at spindle speed four, which will allow you to move the router a little bit faster um, in parallel with the spindle speed changing. Um, and then one thing that I did uh, pause to do after my second pass was I paused and I brushed off all of the dust from the shaper tape because I saw on my tape meter that it had started to flash red over here. Uh, This tape meter, if you look at the upper right corner uh, of the screen, tells you how much or how many of these markers Origin can see. And I heard that you were answering a question also about cutting through the tape. Uh, As long as this tape meter is in the black, you're 100% solid. I could see mine starting to flash down into the red. And when I do that, uh, or when I see that, typically my first move is to just brush any sawdust or any acrylic dust, in this case, off of those dominoes to make sure that the camera can see them 100% clearly. And that completely rejuvenated the tape health meter. The fun thing about AutoPass is that it holds your spot. So I could go back right to where I left off. I didn't have to start again. I just brushed off, came back to where I was, and continued on my way. Perfect. Well, it is a and gorgeous now cutout. Now we've got a nice sync cutout. And if we look at that from the overhead cam one more time, we've actually got two cuts here. This big middle piece we're going to remove. Um, and that's where the sink is going to go. Uh, that's top down. You'll see through the sink base. And this is actually the bottom of, this, of the countertop. And this is an undermount sink. And so what we're going to use this engraving mark for here, you'll see later in the show, is to actually line that sink up without having to do any weird like flip topsy-turvy clamp the sink shenanigans that I see people do. I watch so many YouTube shows before this. And what people will do is they'll put a bar clamp through the drain of the sink, you flip it over, you put the silicone on it, and then you like line it up by feel and by eyeball. <laughs> I didn't like the sound of that. So we're doing this engraving. Nice. Um, yeah, what else is there to talk about? You kind of had time to cover the Corian as a material, which we wanted to mention. It's mostly just acrylic, which yeah. is good to know when you're thinking about how to cut this compared to other materials that you might use in your shop. Um, Doesn't want to melt quite like acrylic, though. I've never, I, at least, I haven't seen it. I'm sure, it could. Yeah, I think the alumina in there. The alumina is like a metal oxide. It's kind of similar to the stuff that sandpaper is made out of. Oh. Uh, not as hard or as abrasive uh, of a mineral form of alumina but like basic sandpapers are alumina based and that's just that like stony binder that keeps this thing feeling as granite-esque as possible right because it's a stone replacement for homework um we're going to talk about that and discuss the cut settings i'm looking at over here on on our whiteboard so i was working at a quarter inch per pass and that worked well at the end of the day Um, I didn't use auto speeds for this, but if we just take a look at the speeds that I set based on some experimentation earlier, I like that seven and a half inches per minute auto speed for a spindle speed of four. And I keep that spindle speed a little bit lower because even with all the alumina, it is plastic at the end of the day and you don't want to melt it. And then that auto speed I felt was a nice balance between going too fast, too slow, the feel of the router. And I didn't, I didn't see your screen. Were you, did you have auto lock on? I didn't. I didn't use it, but just based on what I uh, used earlier, I kind of tuned that in so that we could share that number for the folks that do like to use that because I know we've got a lot of auto fans yeah. in the audience. I mean, sometimes, too, if you want to have a, a super consistent edge quality, you can use that auto lock feature so that it you're traveling around the same speed. So mm-hmm. you're not going to go faster or slower and thus have a slightly different looking edge, potentially. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the one other thing we wanted to talk about before we cut those faucet holes is how I got this design in the first place. Yeah, we do. Right? So if you look at these shapes, we've got two rounded rectangles, and the dimensions for those just came from the sink installation manual. This is a Kohler K20,000 sink, if anyone cares to look it up. Nice rectangular white porcelain undermount sink. And then I've got these three faucet holes, and the dimensions for those just came from the faucet installation manual. It said the, the dimensions for this are wildly variable. It said holes anywhere between one and an eighth 
and one and a half inches. So we went with one and an eighth for a nice tight fit. And then we kind of spaced those out tastefully based on some experiments. Um, now, the one thing I wanted to show you is you could do this all on Origin. You can copy things and move them. But the absolute easiest way to make that kind of design change is going over here to Shaper Studio. So let's pull up the computer, and I can show you how this design looks in Studio. I've got the sink here. You can see my two rectangles. I'm using the custom anchor point, and the reason I'm using the custom anchor point is to get an exact four inch back set of this sink design from the edge where I gridded. So I included all of that in that design, and that's four inches from that custom anchor point to this inner rectangle, because that's the actual cutout. And then I've got these faucet holes. And, you know, I was playing with these earlier, and I had them placed a little bit too far away. Jake said, you know, if the water is on low speed, it's just going to dribble right onto the countertop. So we bumped them in a little bit. And in Studio, it's really easy to do that. I'm going to just click and drag to group select those three. And you can bump things around using the arrow keys. Or you could take these dimensions and position them where you want. So let's say that used to be at 20 inches, that group. That was a little too far away. I took that and I bumped that back in to 19.5. So you take that, you re-import that into Origin, and your design is all up to date. Perfect. So what do you say we cut them out? Let's do it. Okay. Inch and an eighth is right on the money. Are mm -hmm. you going to do... Uh... Yeah, that was a little tight before, and that was in plywood. So we're not going to have as much give in this Corian. So I'm going to give that an offset on tool. So this is one of the nice things that lets you tune that fit. We're going to use an offset. And let's do a 0.01 inch, a negative 0.01 inch to give plenty of space. Generous. Okay. Yeah, a little generous. Precision uh, plumbing here, people. Precision plumbing. Yeah. Uh, when we get to the plumbing portion of the show, please, plumbers, take no offense. We just put the holes in the material. We are not going to hook this up correctly. We are going to show it with the faucet installed, but it's not going to be right. So read the manual when you do this at home. <laughs> all right. So we've got that all zoomed in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the same auto pass settings for this. I did turn the spindle up a little bit, so I should be able to cruise through it a little easier now. But we're going to go to 0.53 in three passes. And probably what I'm going to do when I cut these plugs free is I'm going to pause for each one and take that plug out so it doesn't get jammed up in a rotating cutter. Because these are not taped down in any way, unlike the sink inner portion. Um, and then I'll go back in and do that finish pass, which auto pass allows you to do. Perfect. OK. Here we go. All right, you might have heard Russ say this earlier, but for as simple of a task as it is, cutting circles is one of our favorite things to do because it is the perfect hole cutting machine. It is incredibly precise, so when you have something that is, say, an inch and an eighth, but it's not quite an inch and an eighth, we need to add a couple of thousandths of an inch to make that hole a little bigger, we can do that. Versus taking a Forstner or an auger or a spade bit, we don't have that kind of flexibility. Always make sure the spindle is stopped before you reach in and take the plug out of the vacuum port. <laughs> yeah, those little plugs, if they start bouncing around, uh, especially if they bounce around in your cut, they have the potential to knock you into the inside of your cut wall and leave a little ding, so you don't want that. We also have a feature called Helix. Now, if this hole was just a little bit smaller, or if the uh, cutter he was using was a little bit bigger, he could actually hel Helix cut these holes, which means you enter in your final depth, and it will helically cut from the top down in a spiral action all the way down to the bottom and do a finished cut all in one go. With Auto Pass, it kind of acts just like a helical cut, um, so it allows you that kind of speed in a larger space. 
Um, the difference is Helix is a uh, automatic built-in feature of Origin. And you might be able to hear the sound of Origin too lightly in the background. That is a happy cutter. Before it was a little lower, a little lower tone but it seems to be buzzing through this material much better now at a slightly higher RPM. Yeah, I think I just had the spindle speed set too low, Jake. I almost said You win something. some, you lose some. Hey. I told that. you before the show, if I miss anything up, you got to tell me. Well, you know. You never know, though. It's hard to tell just by sound. But you got those ears finely tuned. Yeah, look at this plug. That's, That's a, a nice, nice plug. little. Here, let's, let's see that on the. Yeah, look at that. It's a granite core. We could use that for something. Let's check out that overhead cam. Now we've got three nice faucet holes, perfectly placed. Um, That's all there is to it. Yeah. Okay. That was a lot of cutting. I, I feel bad for making you narrate all that. That's okay. I <laughs> I think I offered a pleasant amount of silence as well. Yeah, nice little break. <laughs> Zen time. Um, but let's cruise into our mid-show break. What do let's you do say? It. We've got some product announcements. The first thing, though, always is this is the time where we pop up that poll question. And that poll question is just what other home renovation or improvement projects do you want to see us do? We're going to muddle our way through some plumbing today. We could try our hand at electricity. We, if you want to see us zap <laughs> ourselves, let us know. Um, yeah, anything. Sky's the limit. Yeah. Uh, so that poll question is up. Make sure you answer that. I think it's going to be up for three minutes or so, so don't take too long to think about it. In the meantime, let's rehash this promo. Okay, back to the shop promo. Now until September 27th. Yep. What's that mean? Lots of things. All for free. <laughs> you save over $525. On top of the three solid carbide router bits that come stock with every Origin, you're also going to get a quarter inch by eighth inch O-flute router bit, which we've done a show recently on uh, using to engrave or cut brass, mm -hmm. which is really really crazy. A uh, quarter inch by three quarter inch ball nose router bit, which is good for finishing the inside corners of things, juice grooves on cutting boards, things like that. You've got a customizable mini sustainer, so you can use that to make, I don't know, uh, hold your router bits, all these router bits that you're going to get. Uh, you've got two-part training with me and Jake, so we'll get you going on everything that you need to know on the Origin system, Origin plate and workstation. You've got a free roll of two-inch double-sided tape, which you can't see it, but it's holding this sink inner part in uh, right now, and it's really handy stuff. You've got four premium projects that are going to go all the way from like super beginner, get you started, all the way to pretty advanced stuff. And then you get the bundle discount, which is saving $150 when you bundle Origin with plate and workstation. And Jake wants to show off this mini sis. This is the mini sis. This is Russ's mini sis. And he's chosen to make it a beautiful bit selection. And you can cut this foam that comes in it with Origin. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea. So you can make it whatever you want. Yeah. You could put your plumbing tools in there. Put your plumbing tools in here. You could hold probably one pipe wrench, <laughs> a really small pipe wrench in there. All right, so we've got that promo. Uh, what else is going on? We've got always new master classes. So we showed this last week, but whoever missed it or hasn't taken the time to watch it yet, I'm going to re-encourage you to check out Martin Winterhager's master class on surface treatments. He's got some crazy ways that he finishes his cabinetry and furniture projects both with and without origin he's got some bandsaw techniques some like surface grinding techniques mm -hmm. some really crazy stuff um an ebonizing technique with mm -hmm. like the tannins of the wood which i haven't done yet but i really want to try out yeah that one's wild all, on top of all of our other phenomenal master classes that's at shapertools.com slash master class ted's gonna drop that link in the comments and then and then if online master classes weren't enough if you're an IRL kind of person. We're having a masterclass live event here at Shaper HQ in San Francisco, and it's going to be awesome. 
we pro- we've already talked about this a little bit, but uh, last time we talked about it, we actually had a ton of tickets left. We only have four tickets left. So. That's between last week and this week. Yeah. <laughs> so It was launched last week. If we had all the tickets left. Now it's one week in, and we have four tickets left. If you're so sitting on it. If you're on the fence, yeah, now's yeah. the time. Uh, what's happening? It's two days. Two days. Or like an evening and a full day. Yes. Right? So Friday, Saturday. The 10th and the 11th of November. On the evening of the 10th, we are doing a two-hour origin what fundamentals, fundamentals course yeah, yeah. yeah. two hour origin fundamentals course with me and jake and a couple other folks at shaper hq uh after that we're doing a little reception welcome reception with drinks and snacks it's going to be a really pleasant time we've got a nice courthouse with a courthouse courtyard, courtyard. with fire pits the courthouse is just down the street <laughs> Uh, oh, it's three tickets it's, now. It's three tickets now. We're going to turn into real telemarketers. <laughs> uh, and the Saturday of the event, we have three oh, of our favorite masterclass instructors coming in to teach three different courses. We've got Daryl Peart coming to teach green and green techniques. And you're actually going to use Origin hands-on to make a, what is it, a ribbon pole? A ribbon pole uh, straight out of one of his uh, pieces. Yeah. And a gorgeous little piece of of, um, of hardware. Well, wooden hardware. We've got Matt Kenny here who's going to teach sketching for woodworkers. So two hours with him and you're going to learn to draw. Uh, I don't even want to say in his style. He's going to help you develop a style, right? You're just going to improve your skills. Yeah, and a way to um, really get a ton of ideas down on paper and not get held up into one uh, iterative design. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then Phil Morley is going to be here, and he is going to be doing a demonstration of how he builds tambour doors uh, and tracks, yeah. which is, like, really cool. We did a show on that forever ago, but we didn't do it justice compared to him. <laughs> I don't think so. So you get the everyone's going to be going through all three of those classes, plus the fundamentals if you're interested. And you're going to get an additional $100 towards the Shaper store. Uh, you're going to get swag. Mm-hmm. You You get get catered breakfast, lunch, and dinner on Saturday. You get to come to San Francisco. Yeah. Meet us. Hang out. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time. I hope everybody's excited in the comments. I feel like I'm talking to a wall sometimes. Like, we're really excited about this. But if you're excited, let us know. If you're going to be there, let us know. We read the comments after every show. So, (laughs) Uh, cool. With that, I think that's a great segue into this Back to the Shop Phil Morley video that we've got queued up. So we've got this Back to the Shop promo. A lot of our folks uh, that we work with are doing videos on their latest projects. Back to the shop being like the time when Europeans go back to the shop. We don't take as much time off here in the States. Yeah, it's just but nice and catchy it's a too. Good time. it's a good time to like think about how you want to work on your shop for next year, reconfigure your shop for the next year, some tips to learn for the next year in your shop. So let's play that video with Phil. This is a really cool feature on a cabinet that he did lately. Having an origin in the shop has definitely allowed me to push some boundaries. Um, so it's freed me up to do some kind of wild stuff. And, and one of those examples is the whiskey cutout. To be able to do that, the cutout, sure, whatever, that's easy, the pocket. But then to be able to create a eighth inch rim out of another piece of wood that's then gonna insert into that would be incredibly difficult doing it by hand. It's like, it's so much easier to do it with the origin. Like why the hell wouldn't you just do it? So to create the whiskey glass pockets uh, and, and with all these pockets that you see within this piece, obviously there was a lot of testing first before I went to the physical piece. But what I ended up landing on is I really liked the idea of cutting out the pocket, but then not using the actual bottom surface which can be really tricky to get a very, very nice cut. There's a lot of sanding involved. I like the idea of then putting the felt down inside and creating that very delicate ring out of an accent piece of wood, which in obviously the the felt would be stuck down before you put the ring in, but it just gives a really, really nice finished, elegant look. And that's what I'm trying to do. Every piece I build is trying to elevate the design and the quality of the piece. And so the origin, again, makes that pretty simple to do. So it's an operation that would be very difficult, made it very simple. Man, that's nice. Stunning. So that's one of the guys you're going to be learning from at Masterclass Live. Now, we're setting up the sync here for the second part of the show. But while we're doing that, let's play our shop tour for today. Our shop tour for today is from Joseph. This was my two-car garage workshop prior to retirement. Only constraint was 
The wife needed to park in here during winter because it was heated. So a lot of things on the left side of the garage needed to be on wheels. Since retiring, she has given me use of the full shop and I can never thank her enough. The dust collection system in here is set up for that car to be parked on the left side. I haven't really changed much since then. 20 year old Delta Unisaw three horse 220 works as well as it did the day I bought it. Festool assembly table, the MFT three table. Of course, the Capex, various turning woods, more wooden supplies. Something unique to my shop, the use of prescription bottles. Also refrigerator and dishwasher basket pullouts. The workbench here is actually 30 years old, solid maple. The only thing uh, is, is that the top, the foundation is a 36 inch solid core entry door and then an MDF at the top goes in as an insert that can be changed out if needed. More tool storage, Vaxxus on this side, got it on another side as well. Carts used for various things. This is gonna be a finishing cart, more storage here. These cabinets here are microfilm drawer cabinets. They used to store all of our drawings when we would microfilm them before the age of digital, full extension, heavy duty. I was extremely lucky to get these from the company at the time when we went full digital. More wood storage there. Of course, sharpening stations for wood turning, for metal, sanding, drill press. In the far corner there is the Oneida Air System for dust collection. Upgraded lathe, retirement. Again, a lot of prescription bottles being used everywhere. Upgraded bandsaw for retirement, three horse, 220, 16 inch resaw capacity. Able to keep track of what blade is on the bandsaw the last time I used it. Blade pullout for storage. More storage for fixtures. A portable French cleat unit that I built some time ago to bring the tools to where I was working. Of course, the MFT3 sustainers, a one ton lift cart, great for lifting stuff to the lathe or the bandsaw. Another Vaxxis system over here. Here you've got a cart for measuring and layout. Another one for sanding discs and dominoes. Over here, you've got one for power tools and sanding. Again, more wood storage, more turning wood storage, panels in the back. Here is a eight inch, uh, three horse, 220 volt jointer, spiral head, uh, grizzly. You'll notice the tape on the floor. That's so that if I move them out of the way, I can bring the machines right back to where they were. I don't have to measure or lay out anything. Spiral head added to the thickness planer, dust separator on top of the dust extractor, drum sander. Here again, being able to know exactly what sandpaper was on there the last time I used it. Cabinets here hold things like finishing finishes and um, paints, and then some miscellaneous tools. And as you see here, here's where the shapers come in in this small shop. This cart's about 30 years old. I'm able to actually take off the extensions take the main table, flip it over, and put it in, in the drawer that I have here. I was really surprised by that. Here's a lot of the things I did initially, um, including doing an onboard to put the key here with a magnet. This is where it's going to be. I just finished up working on uh, some of the zero clearance inserts for the Capex. I've got my iPad there. I also built this here to hold some of the stuff in place while I was working on. And then at the bottom there, you'll see I've got plate there and I've got the shaper uh, plate accessories Velcroed there. We've got some <laughs> clean shops. Way to flex on us there. Yeah, holy that was, smokes. I, love, I just love seeing, I feel like I'm constantly impressed on how well you can organize a small space like a one car garage it doesn't matter what space you have you can put whatever you want in it yeah 
as long as you do it right. I like the charts for keeping track of what bandsaw blade you have in there, what speed it's set out, what sandpaper you have in the in the drum sander. That was pretty cool. I love that. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Uh, for anyone who hasn't submitted their shop tour yet, send that to sessions at shapertools.com, and when we play your shop tour, we'll send you something fun. Uh, Joseph, we sent his swag a while ago, so I forget what it was, but it was like a router bit. It's good stuff. Okay. So we've got this sink set up. Um, again, this is the bottom of the countertop. And it came with these tabs. I'm going to show this off on the Origin Cam. We've got these tabs here. These hold the sink up. They're going to look like they're holding the sink down, but when the sink's right side up, they're actually holding the sink up to the bottom of the countertop. And there's two things that you do here. There's these. These are a backup for the silicone sealant, which we're not going to do today because we're not real plumbers, and we want to be able to take this apart and do it again. Precisely. So you would seal this with silicone. That's an adhesive also. And then we're going to also use these tabs to hold the sink in place. I've got this thing. This is crazy. Jake found this on the internet, right? No, this is like the a, hardware store. It was at the <laughs> hardware store. This is like a chalk sprayer. So we're going to use this just to mark where we want the holes for this feature to be. And what's going to happen here is we're going to install threaded inserts into this Corian. And I thought that this would be a fun way to just show off how kind of flexible design with origin can be. It doesn't always have to be like so uh, predetermined and right to the number. I'm actually going to redo this one because I think that one's too far in. Nice thing about this chalk is you can always just smear it back away. There we go. That's a better spot. So we've marked these four with the chalk gun. And let's set the sink off to the side now. Can I hand this to you, Jake? We're going to add to scan with Origin, and what adding to that scan is going to do is it's going to add these little chalk marks to our workspace. So let's go back into scan here, add to scan, no, not workspaces, add to scan, there we go. And we do this with pencil marks all the time too. So you can see I'm just scanning over, getting these images, make sure you hit the spots where you have got that green going to finish. And now once this recalculates, I can zoom in over here and you can see, where is it? It should be right over here. There we go. You can see I've got that little chalk mark right there. You know, this isn't as bright as it was on the plywood, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we can see them. We can still see them. So uh, we're going to add a circle for each one of these. And this is, again, where I say Origin is the best tool for making holes in the shop. Because these threaded inserts that I got said to use, I'm going to turn grid off for this, just so I can freehand it. This can be totally freestyle. Um, the, the threaded inserts that I bought said that they could be used with, uh, with quarter inch drills. And I tried doing this with a quarter inch and I could not get the threaded stud to thread in to, uh, to that insert at all. It was far too tight. I think it was going to break the Corian. So I just bumped it up by a hundredth of an inch, 0 0.01. And doing that allowed me to get the perfect fit. So we're going to do these to 0.26. These are all just placed freehand to match that grid, uh, or not the grid, those marks. We're going to helix these. We want to go down to 0.375 inches. We want no offset there. And I do want to make sure to double check my Z-touch, because it would be a shame to cut all the way through this Corian in a place where you didn't want to. OK, this should be pretty quick. Cool. I'm being told that there's only two tickets left for the Masterclass Live event coming up on November 10th and 11th. As of now, two tickets. Glad he's using 
helix gives you an opportunity to see what that's that's like. Our coworker Sean was just telling me how he did a System 32 cabinet the other week. So he was helixing every single hole all the way down the down the uh, eight foot tall cabinet, and it was a breeze. Much faster than having to lay everything out. He did way more holes than I would have, too. <laughs> he, did. he did a lot he, like, of holes. He doubled it, actually. All right, so let's get these threaded inserts in here. Now, these are threaded inserts or, like, barbed? These are threaded inserts, and they're knurled, and they've got this slit in them. So I'll hold this up to the origin cam. We can see what's going on. These are knurled. They're threaded, and they've got this split in them. So you put them in a hole that's smaller than the knurling. And then when you thread the stud into them, they expand and hold onto the Corian. Now, we don't work with Corian that much, so I'm not going to say we're world-class experts on it, but we do get a little bit of practice. We did this a couple of times before the show, and I would say do not thread anything directly into Corian. I would say definitely use threaded inserts because this stuff is brittle. It's like acrylic, like we said, but the addition of the stone makes it even more brittle. I would say. So um, we're going to be very careful with these threaded inserts also not to thread in too deep. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we need the mount. Well, Jake's going to run and get that. I'll just describe our setup here. We've got these threaded inserts that are going to go in, and then I've got these threaded studs that I'm going to screw into the threaded inserts. And then I've got washers and wing nuts that are going to go over the top. So you can see those are nice and flush. Now let's thread these in. And Jake, could you hand me that smaller wrench? Perfect. We've got four of these. It's going to get just a little repetitive. And with these, I counted. I want to make sure that I go no more than seven full turns Otherwise, they'll blow out the backside of the Cori, and that's how fragile this stuff can be. So we're gonna, we already did one, so we'll do two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, Six and last one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. It's telling you that it's almost. Yeah, it's it's done. <laughs> All right, let's unclamp everything. We can pop the sink on, and since this is the only thing that's taped down, we can install the sink, and then we'll just lift everything up onto blocks so everybody can see how we did. Oh, and we have to install the faucet too. Mm -hmm. All right, so the drain goes on that side. And this is why we want to use that engraving bit to align this, because this sink, as beautiful as it is, not, the, not a perfect casting. It's really difficult to get porcelain like this to, to cast like perfectly square. Stainless steel sinks are much more on the money because they don't move when they're, you know, you don't fire a stainless steel sink in a kiln. Yeah, so you see that overhead, you got a big arc right there. And for stainless steel sinks, you can use something like a jigsaw and a following bit to get that nice profile um, because it's so square off the bat. But you really don't want to do that with a porcelain sink, with a porcelain sink like this that is not inherently square. If we followed this profile, it would be all over the place. Yeah, so two washers and two wing nuts. Now again, if you were doing this for real, you would want a, uh, you would want silicone sealant and adhesive underneath there. And uh, one thing that we're gonna do on the other side, but we didn't do on this side, is we're gonna use a just a palm router to round it over also because you really don't want those sharp, sharp edges. 
This stuff's acrylic, and just like any plastic, it can get real sharp. Struggling. You know, some of these aren't threaded the best. That's Maybe why. I gave you the two bad ones. That's definitely why. Yeah, this one's really not good. I think this one's a bum wing nut. All right, we got more over here. Yeah, see how much easier that was? Super satisfying. Okay, let's get the blocks ready and we can lift it up to the other side. Come over there. Okay. We're breaking the fourth wall. Whoa. <laughs> Not bring it towards you. Yeah. Let's uh let's flip this way. This way. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Ooh. Oh, nice. Okay. There we go. Okay. That's clear. We got a little, oh, you know what? For showbiz, this should be facing the camera. You're right. This should be the other way, and then we can do the faucet. That makes sense. All right. Rotate. Thanks, everybody, for hanging on. There we go. Looks pretty good. All right, now we got a sink. Kind of tag team the sink portion, but uh, we say whoever doesn't cut assembles. Yeah, <laughs> so you I'm ready here. to do the faucet, Jake? I'm here for it. And uh, let's zip over this. Let's do this round over real quick. What do you okay. think? Okay. Yeah. I got it. Never mind. Are we out of battery? No. Is it uh, locked? No. Yeah, we got full battery. Wait for it. It's blinking at us. What if we what if we turn it off and on again? There we go. Yeah, Beautiful. there we go. Okay, that's better. That's a fun smell. Yeah, plasticky. <laughs> okay, let's do that faucet. All right. <laughs> What's the standard? We got red on the... Yeah, the opposite of what you'd expect. Yeah. So, yeah, red on the right for this one. Yeah, our right. And then when it's turned around, it'll be correct. That is. That's a nice fit. A nice you fit. You know the faucet's going to be in the right spot. And then we're doing. Doing that stem. That down the middle. Yep. That around. This goes underneath. If you're following along with the manual at home, you'll notice we're skipping like all of the seals and washers. We're just trying to get this thing together. Beautiful. Now this is a fun part. We gotta make sure. Start and stop point. Mm. It's nice. Mm, 
I did it backwards. If yours is backwards, then mine's probably backwards too. <laughs> no, that's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Voila. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Let's tilt this up so everybody can see. There Look we go. at that. That's a sink. Perfect, consistent reveal. Mm-hmm. Very nice, well done. Nice faucet placement. Man, just admiring our handiwork. <laughs> <laughs> it really is a beautiful cut quality, too. And uh, it's ready to go in. Mm-hmm. I hope none of my family's watching this. <laughs> No, I'll do anybody's sink. Grandma, if you're watching, I'll do your sinks. Okay. That is awesome. That's a, that's a show. That's a wrap. I hope that was as satisfying for you as it was for me. Because this is something that I hadn't really done until like last week. Yeah. And we spent a week to learn how to install an undermount sink. And here we are with a perfect clean undermount sink. Takeaways, I would say, make sure you test first mm -hmm. if you're using a new material. But, you know... If you want a good, straight, clean edge on your sink installation with Corian, there's no better tool than Shaper Origin. You heard it here. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.